Hey there, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat here in Western North Carolina. We'll kick it off today by installing the wall sheathing on the basement walls, which we did not do yet. And we're using this Zip System R sheathing, which has a rigid foam layer in addition to the 7 16th wood sheathing. This extra layer of foam insulation on the outside of the studs really improves the efficiency by preventing thermal bridging, which is heat loss directly through the studs. And I wanna give Huber, the makers of Zip System, a huge shout out for hooking us up with the material for this job. We've been using their products for decades and they've partnered with us on this build and we couldn't be more grateful. And if you've ever seen this green wall sheathing on a house under construction before and wondered what it was, all it is is the sheathing plus a built-in moisture barrier so that you don't need a house wrap. Once all the panels are installed, you simply tape all the joints with this zip system tape. This actually gives you a very efficient and tight home if it's done properly. Solid wall sheathing like this is actually not required by code on the entire wall surface, just the corners. But in my opinion, it would be absolutely ludicrous to do anything else besides use solid wall sheathing on the entire surface. It serves three huge purposes. Number one, it's the outside of your building envelope, which seals your home. Number two, it gives a solid nailing surface anywhere on the outside of the home. And number three, it actually diagonally braces the walls. This is what actually keeps your house standing. To get the most performance out of this zip system tape, after applying it by hand, we go back with a zip system roller, and it says roll the tape all over it. You can't miss this on the actual product. This rolling of the tape activates the pressure sensitive bonding agent in the tape and makes it really, really stick well. And yet another zip system product that I love to use on our builds is this zip system stretch tape. We use it for our window pan flashings and you can see here, it stretches out on inside corners out to the face of the sheathing super easily without a pinhole in the corner like you might typically see. And with all of the sheathing installed and taped, it was time to head to town and grab another special surprise from Huber that I think you'll love. Really think this truck's gonna pull all that lumber? F-150, baby. V8 power. I think we're in trouble, dude. I think you're gonna <laughs> blow your engine open. Appalachian Trail. Arla said something about turning at a some kind of bush to see the trailer. For Cynthia Bush? Is that a for Cynthia Bush? This was literally his directions, was turn at some kind of bush. Is it back there? Oh, uh, there it is. There's the for Cynthia. I don't know, man. Jan is gonna have your hide, bro. You just rode through her garden. She's like, I missed the corn right between the corn rows. You were in so much That's trouble. That's not even corn. That's just grass. <laughs> That's just a weed. That's what Arla said to do. Remember, he said, cut it tight on the garden, swing it wide around the, the first Cynthia, Cynthia, and you're good. And you're good. He did exactly what he said. Good job. And finally, here's what we were after: a bundle of Advantech X Factor, which is Huber's new Advantech that has some improvements, and it's coming out later this year. We decided to load only as much as we needed for this one day because I did not trust these tiny tires on Arlo's trailer, but it turns out this trailer will actually haul about 4,000 pounds. Hey, I'm running and grab a chicken sandwich <laughs> here real quick. I didn't know that was one word. I guess here in Bryson City it is. <laughs> grab a. Since our parking area was still full of all of the guys' trucks, I decided to back this load in about a mile, just like the concrete trucks had done. And Jason, man, I'm sorry you had to ride with me on this ride. It was a rough and long one. Arlo also had a brilliant idea. Since this trailer has so much stick out past the back axle, he said, hey, why don't you back that thing over the pit right up to the wall, then I'll cut and hand you the wood right off the trailer. So that's what we did. To help prevent any future problems with squeaking on the subfloor, we're also using Advantex polyurethane subfloor adhesive. This polyurethane adhesive will stick to wet, dry, or even frozen wood and has a squeak-free guarantee right on the box. 
And if you're wondering why it's important to glue this down, it's nearly impossible to get back to the subfloor when the house is done. It's sandwiched between the finished floor and the ceiling in the basement. And actually a fun fact is that the squeaking you usually hear on a subfloor is actually the nail squeaking in the joist, not the wood actually squeaking. For that reason, we don't even use nails, we use screws. And we've been using this quick drive gun for a while. It's basically an extended version of a drill so that you don't have to bend down and it can load these clips of collated screws to make it faster. So what exactly is Advantech X-Factor? Well, it's Advantech, which is already a high performance subfloor panel, and it has a fade resistant water shedding surface, specially designed for subflooring applications on top of it. It also has a self-spacing tongue and groove and obviously a yellow color that will allow you to mark up the panel easily for kitchen layout and things like that. You can see here how I'm prying some of these floor joists straight to line up with the markings on layout on these subfloor panels. And this is important so that the bats of insulation down below actually fit into each cavity between the joists properly. factor is what's that it's like DeWalt tool camo you see any tools out there I don't either it's in black what's yeah not? It's just right that's just writing <laughs> listen team screw is getting way behind so I'm gonna run the seams with a with my own drill you run the flats one two three Genius. team screw team screw you got nail guns going and screw guns going you do look safe <laughs> got glue going everywhere <laughs> These actually Yo, guys, are nice. Are Put them on. Wood down or what? Everything does look better through those. And your lens is safe. Yeah. Your camera's safe. Now you're putting your wood down. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you can't even see through that. This thing. is like Jono walking around. What? That's what what color is it through there? <laughs> that is so fun through Jono's eyes. <laughs> This entire process of putting down the subfloor took us about an hour and a half, and as you can see, we had a pretty great time doing it, which is always important to me. Special thanks again to Huber and Advantech for letting us take a sneak peek at your new subfloor. back about five years it's like every everything had bark edges on it, and it yeah. you know half the thing was gone and it's like now they're cutting way better it seems like they uh, found some trees somewhere yeah either they're, either they're uh, making better trees or who knows <laughs> it's a nice wood or they're going older growth skittles and cook them up boil them and then are you counting how many you're eating though dude my butcher is at 50 it don't matter right now i just swallow the whole skittle <laughs> <laughs> what? He didn't die of uh, because of his sugar. He died choking on a skittle. <laughs> Question. Yes. Do you frame the interior or exterior walls first? Is that your question? No. I would say exterior walls okay. first. Okay. Question. Okay. Which studs are on top? Two by fours. Question. Two by four walls. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> And with that settled, we moved a few boards and got ready to build the upstairs walls. Another thing I did was use a leaf blower to blow off any water on these subfloor panels so that I don't ruin my chalk line with the first snap. If you didn't know, if you put a chalk line in a puddle, it doesn't work very well the next time. One of my pet peeves is making sure that the window over the kitchen sink is dead center. Exactly. And it's very noticeable if it's not because you have a big faucet sticking up in the center of the sink. So what I'm doing here is double checking back from both directions, finding the center of the window, checking the cabinet layout, making sure I'm leaving room for the drywall and everything that needs to be there to make sure this thing is dead, dead nuts. We're doing the headers a little bit different on this floor and that's because the walls are not as tall as the basement walls. We're going to rip this header down just a little bit so that our box header fits tight from the top of the jack to the bottom of the bottom plate with no cripples needed and this will save us a lot of time. This is actually a historic moment right here. 
Arlo choosing to not use a corded saw when ripping yellow pine. Never thought that would happen. You mind to go uh, grab a, me a uh, two by four? Yeah, I'll grab a two by four. <laughs> and while Jason went to grab me a two by four, I started looking at the plans and the view and realizing I had made a mistake to put the closet on the outside wall and we needed to move the bathroom there and put a window in the bathroom, making it much nicer. So why do we even bring plans to the job? You never follow them. It's a general guideline that we're gonna sort out and perfect on site. Notice that he never shows us the plan. <laughs> no, exactly, no. Yeah, so. Can we see that? No, you don't no. need to see that. Uh, we're gonna move this over here and move that over there and we're gonna put a window here. So we try not to make too many changes on a house and I'm not recommending to anyone they start building a house that a final set of drawings that's not what I'm saying but since we are the builder and we are the architect that does give us a little leeway to change things where we see fit as long as it's okay with the inspections department and we haven't gone too far in some other direction to where something won't work it happens a lot of times in this area where you're standing on a subfloor platform looking around and you realize that the windows on the drawing aren't facing exactly where the view is and in this area, that's why people build houses here. They want to see the view. So it's very common that I move the locations of windows around to accommodate and maximize the view that they get to see from any room. I wanna say that this type of on-the-fly changes would not fly on a lot of different types of jobs, but on these small one-off houses, I've never had a problem. These upstairs walls are framed much the same as the basement walls are and we actually tried to build about the maximum length of wall that we can lift with our five or six guys on the site that day. The major difference is that we can actually toenail the wall plates to the subfloor where you can't do that on concrete. That gives us the opportunity to straighten the bottom plate and then square the wall so we can put the sheathing on the wall before we stand it up. The wall sheathing can be applied either vertically or horizontally, and in this case we're actually letting these pieces lap down below the windows so that they'll tie across to the floor system. When it's nailed, it will really hold the wall down to the floor system. Since these walls were laying flat on the floor, I made an extra long extended handle for our zip roller, and this is actually one of the extension poles from our bull float, and this worked great, except I about took Jason's head off. And after that, we could actually lift this wall, and it was pretty heavy, actually. The reason the wall plate isn't sliding off the edge of the subfloor is that it is toenailed to the subfloor and those nails work as a hinge while you lift it. There is a video of us doing this live, by the way, if you want to see the whole eight minutes of it in real time. Next, we framed the wall on the other side of the house, and it was very similar, except we had to deal with framing over top of the hole that's for the stairwell, but we did get around that by putting some scaffolding down there. I want to say on certain jobs, we have just temporarily framed over this and sheathed over it so that you can walk around and then cut all that out later, and that does work, but is a little extra work. These three windows will be facing the National Park and the National Forest, so basically there will never be anything in this view, which is awesome. And this is the view looking out from where the living room is going to be. Pretty nice. Our next project on the house starting Monday will be to frame this giant gable end wall and it has a bunch of windows in it and it's super tall. So we're all looking forward to that. Thanks for building with us.